Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Um, popular news. I would not have thought this would be. Um, however, uh, this was one of the most spoken about things out there. I'll tell you why. But also, it's like, okay, cool. It says, in a significant move towards transparency, El Salvador's National Bitcoin Office, called ONBTC, okay, has announced the launch of its own mempool space. This development allows anyone to view the country's Bitcoin treasury holdings. The initiative is supported by mempool, which revealed it has provided a custom instance of the mempool open source project for the ONBTC. The step enhances the transparency and auditability of El Salvador's Bitcoin treasury. Let me try and explain. So El Salvador, a number of years ago, was the first official country to adopt Bitcoin as a form of legal tender. There's tons of videos and documentaries and you can go watch all the utopian things that they're doing on YouTube. The issue, that's not really an issue, is that El Salvador for like a number of years wasn't as transparent about their Bitcoin holdings as people would have liked. We've moved into a world where people think it's appropriate for everyone to know everything that you're doing at any given time of the day. It's like those really weird YouTubers who are like, let me show you my entire portfolio and how much money I have in my bank account. That's no, that's a very weird thing to do. People have gotten used to things like that, especially because MicroStrategy and like one other company they, they show how much they have. It's meant to be more of a flex and not of a transparency thing. It's more of a, look how much monies we have. We have billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. This is why you've seen other companies get into the space and they will not announce how much Bitcoin they have because in essence, it is their prerogative. We've gone over that before. It is no one's right to know how much you have of anything. You would not... You would not meet a random person on the street and go, hey, guess who has 20000 in their bank account? That's, that's not a thing you would do. You would not be a celebrity and go on TV and go, oh, yeah, you know, this $35 million is really heavy. You know, it, it's just not a thing. There was also, I, what was it? This was a couple of days ago. No, no, no. Weeks, 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 weeks. It was weeks ago. There was some weird interview. I think it was with Will Smith. And they were asking him his net worth, and he looked at them, and he was like, are you crazy? I don't know who you are. You're some random person interviewing me. So a couple of months ago, we heard that um, El Salvador was getting to begin to start mining Bitcoin with uh, geothermal energy with because they were full of volcanoes, and they were going to use the extra energy to mine Bitcoin. And I think we heard when they've mined their first Bitcoin. And then I think it came, I forgot what happened. It was something along the lines of they said a number of how much Bitcoin they had. But someone else was like, no, I thought you had this many Bitcoin. And that started people talking on Twitter about like, why aren't they more transparent? It's because they don't have to be. You should be happy that they're in the space in general. The fact that ugh, it, it, it's just so weird. The whole point of Bitcoin and the space is, one, to be able to have economic freedom to move money around as you so please. It's not for people to tell you how much Bitcoin they have, when they're moving it, how they're doing it, how they acquired it. Just be happy that they're in the game. So this was a couple of weeks ago, and I assume this is the reaction to it of El Salvador being like, OK, everyone calm down. We'll now be far more transparent uh, with the amount of Bitcoin that we have. Apparently, according to the data, because, you know, it's out there now, they hold 5,748 BTC, valued at just over $352.8 million. 
It says this move aims to enhance transparency and accountability in the management of the country's Bitcoin investments. Was that ever a topic of discussion? Did that come up in the very beginning? I, I don't remember anyone ever talking about that El Salvador had to be as transparent as possible. It's it's their money. I mean, it's cool that they show how much that they have, but it's also like, do 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 you need that? So yeah, um, this was by far the most spoken about, the most talked about Bitcoin news that was out there. Um, sure, very. I have I have nothing more to really say about this other than I think people need to focus more on their own lives and what they are doing as opposed to what other people are doing. Can anyone point to and or reference me a moment that El Salvador did something wrong and or claimed they were going to do something with their Bitcoin that they didn't or lied to people and therefore needed to be more transparent? Can you find something that says that the president since 2020, 2021 wanted to be exclusively open about the... Anyway... That's the El Salvador has Bitcoin, and now you can see exactly how much Bitcoin they have because people have nothing else better to do with their time news. Eh, yeah. Let's move on. Also, in news, and we were constantly getting this as if it's supposed to be something like that we worship or like, oh my gosh, that's so fantastical. I can't believe that this happened. There's a lot of news like that and I don't know why people write articles like that. I do not know if they are being paid, but it's constantly like a, if you Google for one and a half seconds, you'll be able to find the actual news. And did this so article, yes, it says Turkey, the country, is preparing to present a new law to regulate crypto assets to parliament. The legislation, aimed at aligning with international standards and reducing risks associated with crypto transactions, will enforce strict regulations on the licensing and operating of cryptocurrency trading platforms by the Capital Markets Board. Turkey is one of those countries who said for a long time that they were going to regulate and did not regulate, for those of you who haven't been keeping up with your Turkey crypto news, crypto is huge in Turkey. It's not like a little huge. It's like monstrously huge. It's one of those things where you, when you learn about it, you're like, why aren't CNBC, Fox News, and every, why is no one talking about this? Turkey is obsessed with crypto. They have a gigantic cryptocurrency market, even just swirling amongst themselves. The reason, you ask, it's not only because they, they like Bitcoin and crypto. It's because their local currency is collapsing completely and utterly. They built a building that has no base. Try and imagine it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of completely insane. And the issue is is that over the years, their inflation level has only gotten much worse and their interest rates have only gotten worse. So the issue is, is that they're looking for a way to kind of literally reel it in and regulate this market that so many people are getting into. Because of terrible, terrible, terrible economic choices, the country's not been doing so hot. And it's one of those places where you might have heard in the news, maybe on an Instagram reel, I don't know, as like, hey, come visit here. Our currency has collapsed. Look how sunny it is. Look at all the beaches we have. There's been a lot of videos and news over the years. One of the more famous ones, which we've spoken about several times, are these videos of people from Dubai. And Singapore, literally going to Turkey to go shopping, like luxury shopping, because the value of luxury goods is actually like one-fifth the price. 
So, of course, people are going there. They have all these videos of people going to four-star and five-star hotels for a week. And it comes out to like $200. So, it's great for the tourists who are there who are pumping money into the ever-afflating economy. But the, the people who live there, that's, that's the ossipit. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's like the opposite of good for all of them. So these people who've been struggling over the years trying to figure out what do we do to get around this terrible inflation, they've done what the thing is for and they got into Bitcoin. So this this news is is being pushed around for what I have seen as like, a, oh gosh, another government, bless them, they're doing what's right. And it's like, no, you don't understand once again this is all just about monies because, as we've stated before, people are using these systems and they're sending money around without the government's air quotes knowing. And the issue is that the governments want to always know everything. So then you also have the situation of, well, people are choosing not to use their local currency and they're using Bitcoin and Tether instead. Same exact thing with the U.S. dollar. There are millions of people on the planet who are choosing to use Bitcoin and Tether as their literal ways of transacting value. It is never touching the U.S. dollar, and that's a problem for the people who have the currencies. So if the U.S. dollar is not looking so hot and has lost 99... The U.S. I'm going to say this forever. The U.S. dollar has lost 99.9% of its value compared to the value of Bitcoin. It's lost 99%. Now imagine the other world currencies. Yeah, see? Yeah. It will also ensure the safe custody of assets, establish transparent platform customer relationships, and specify sanctions for non-compliance because I, I expect only corruption. I'm not expecting not corruption. You, you got to gotta sprinkle some corruption on there. You know, people won't be able to live their best life otherwise. Major news. All over the place. Everyone's talking about it. There's so many. I think now once a week. Once a week we're, 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 we're getting some kind of a... A uh, country who wasn't in the space before or ignored it since 2017 is finally releasing some kind of regulations and everyone's like, yeah, regulations. And it's like, okay, so cool, fantastic. Um, they could have done this years ago. This is also for those of you, I mean, if anyone is wondering, this is more of like a blanket thing between the World Bank, the IMF, and I forgot the other three letter thing. Uh, they're all trying to b basically have like the same anti-money laundering KYC things that banks already have, but on the cryptocurrency space, it's weird. It's actually kind of odd to think like that the people literally at the very top are like forcing countries to make laws and rules and regulations to get crypto under control because they see how much happier that other people are now. That's so yeah, also right here as well for those of you uh, wanting to see the numbers. Uh, Turkey's current inflation rate is 69.8%. Yeah, see the numbers? It goes, wee, it just keeps on going up. And it's only been getting uh, worse. And these are, oh uh, gosh, what's the word? Their interest rate. Do you know how like interest rates in most places around the world are like 5% and 7%? In Turkey, it's currently 50%. Five zero. Yeah, the economy is not doing too hot. Uh, and there are rumors that they're going to continue raising it because they think that that's the way to get things under control. And it's not. Uh, they were actually told back in 2020 how to get things further under control. And the, the news is that they did not listen. That's the Turkey is preparing cryptocurrency regulations because people in their country are continuing to use crypto because their currency is absolute garbage, as are many other currencies. I mean, if not all, if not all fiat currencies at this point, 99.9%. Do you understand that number? That is a smidge away from 100. And yeah. Uh, let's move on. In 
slightly confusing news. I thought we had this news seven years ago, but apparently we did not. Japanese financial powerhouse called SBI Holdings has further solidified their support for XRP through the launch of a validator by its crypto exchange subsidiary SBIVC Trade, SBI, one of the most popular names in crypto back in 2017, is a gigantic Japanese banking consortium that basically owns a whole bunch of companies and you get it. Tons and tons of things. They announced their support for Ripple and for XRP back in 2017. That was part of the, you know, the the price pumps. Everyone was like, who's this gigantic corporation who announced that they liked crypto? And the, the, the thing back then was, is they didn't say Bitcoin, they didn't say Ether. They said they loved XRP. So we got news that SBI was launching their own crypto exchange and they were going to be exclusively listing XRP and then listing XRP as a trading pair to every other coin, which was quite unorthodox because normally it was just Bitcoin as a trading pair to every other coin. The CEO of SBI had such strong conviction. He's known for having gone on Twitter and said like XRP is going to $10 and all these other kinds of things. So now they're being announced as a validator uh, for the XRP blockchain. When I say I thought we had this seven years ago, because I could have sworn that SBI had already been announced as a validator on the network. But apparently not. So this is the news now. It says this move signifies a significant step for XRP adoption in the Japanese market and grants SBI VC trade a role in securing the network's operations. The announcement, made on the 10th of May, highlights SBI VC trade's long-standing belief in the potential of XRP. This faith, ha- ugh, English. This faith has translated into the digital token becoming a prominent asset on the XRP ledger platform. The validator launched is already operational as confirmed by on-chain data. And here's the thing from article from 2018. SBI Holdings new crypto exchange will exclusively list XRP during launch. I assume this had already happened a number of years ago. Uh, XRP, quite famous, or the XRP ledger. Um, I don't know how this became a thing, but a number of years ago, a lot of the people and institutions who were actually validating transactions on the XRP blockchain uh, were tons of like university campuses. Yeah, that was also a thing a number of years ago. I don't know how or why or how that became a thing. But um, yeah, so cool. Once again, like a little, little bit of a blast from the past. The last couple of days, I'm not sure where all these things and news and letters and things are coming from but um sure i guess S- I, mean, I mean sbi is literally in japan and as i am not in japan i haven't heard the letters sbi in a while but i assume they're still ticking with ripple cool that's the sbi holdings is now a validator for the xrp blockchain news okay haven't had xrp's in news in a while okay all right Let's move on. Also in yay, this was also celebrated and I, and I don't, I don't not understand why, but it's also like a, okay, similar to Bitcoin's on chain fees. The cost of transacting on the Ethereum network has recently seen a significant decline. Okay. Over the previous 68 days. Since the 5th of March, Ethereum's network fees have fallen by 93% from $30 to around $1.91 per transaction. I mean, I transacting on the Ethereum blockchain has become significantly more affordable with the average cost now at approximately okay $1.91 as reported by BitInfo charts. Additionally, 
Executing a basic ETH transfer currently costs between 4 and 7 GVI, or around 18 to 37 cents per transfer. I do... I don't know if people like transaction news. I just heard someone say no. Believe me, I totally get it. But this was also quite popular. There's a lot of like, there's a, a whole niche area of Ethereum news that people keep reporting on that I look at and I go, oh, cool. That's awesome. There was one, what was it? Like two days ago. What was it? It was some kind of like Ethereum metric. And I was like, oh, that's fun. There was an article that also mentioned that Ethereum had recently re-become inflationary. Because for those of you who don't know, by proof-of-stake design, Ethereum is now deflationary. So as long as there are more transactions happening on the network, there are coins being burned every transaction, and it's more than is actually being created by the network. Ethereum also has their own halvings, but they're not called halvings. It just kind of happens. I don't. Is there a s schedule for this? I have no. I have no clue. So the issuance rate of Ethereum, like mathematically, continues to drop. There's also a coin burn. But I think for one week, when prices were like really going down a couple of weeks ago, the news was I think a couple of ether had been made, and all these articles were like Ethereum's in trouble. Prices are going down. It's now inflationary, and I was like, whoa, you guys need to cool it a little bit. So I guess it's nice news that transaction fees are, are lower, but when you don't really update the main chains, this is what's going to happen. And this is why people are using Polygon and other layered solutions because of these transaction fees. So... That's the Bitcoin and Ethereum transaction fees have gone down over the course of the last, it says 68 days. That's a very specific number. Okay. All right. Let's move on. In, see, all the all the all the altcoin news is uh, keep popping back up. I I mean I guess it's nice. It's it's indicative of a a a bull run, a a bull cycle within the cryptocurrency space, but I always find the timing to be a a tiny bit weird if you will. A lot of you should, if not all of you should know IOTA, I O T A. It's a blockchain, I think, from 20... Oh, excuse me. Not a blockchain, it's a tangle. You know how, like, XRP has a ledger? IOTA, they say that they don't have a blockchain. It's more like a spider web that's constantly interconnected and all these other fancy-schmancy words. They launched, I think, in 2017, and they were touted as the next XRP. Similar to how all these new coins keep popping up and they're touted as the new Ethereum. Everyone wants to be the new something. The issue is, is that according to uh, developers, back in 2017, it didn't work. They literally looked through the code and they were like, there's a huge problem. The people from IOTA said it was all FUD. And lo and beholdens... Um, it, it just, you know, kind of disappeared from the ecosystem. The last real news that we had about IOTA, I think, was 2019 when they partnered with Bosch and um, Land of Rover Jaguar to be the currency of wash machines. This isn't a joke. Of wash machines and... Laguar, Laguar, Jaguar Land Rover, um, as like, so the idea of IoT is something that you don't hear much about anymore because people didn't want it, regardless of what companies kept on trying to tell us. IoT was a futuristic idea in 2015, 16, and 17 of there being every device that you have would be interconnected, every device. Anything that can link to the internet is hyper-connected and they talk to each other all day. 
Why would we need this? Because dystopia. So basically, your kitchen camera, which they tried to make a thing, would also be connected to your, what do you call it? Ah, yeah, because certain refrigerators also had cameras. Don't forget that weird thing. It would also look and talk to your refrigerator to monitor what you have inside the fridge. This is all real. This isn't fake. I'm not, I'm, this is not a joke. It would monitor what you have inside the fridge and it would say, hey, Elizabeth needs some more milk. It's 20% left and her orange juice isn't doing too well either. It would talk to the dishwasher and it would turn on the dishwasher, which would then talk to your Roomba and the Roomba would turn on and the Roomba would say, hey, I need more cleaning product. So all these devices would basically essentially order things on Amazon themselves. And the idea was with the Internet of Things, the IOTA, IOTA coin, would be the currency of all of that. However, as we realize that my floor doesn't have to talk to my wall, which talks to my phone, the entire thing essentially went nowhere. However, the IOTA Foundation is back in the news. The IOTA Foundation has achieved a significant milestone in its journey towards a fully decentralized network with the launch of the IOTA 2.0 public test net. So much in the same breath of Cardano and many other chains, and I dare even lightly attach Ethereum to that as well. IOTA's been away for a while, and the news is that they've come back with a test net. They were talking about IOTA 2.0 back in 2018, and there's still no IOTA 2.0. This pivotal development marks a new chapter in IOTA's history, and, and it says exciting milestone. Okay, it's a milestone in the evolution of digital ledger technologies. And here's the tweet for it right here. IOTA has reached a new milestone. After years of research and, de and development, we're thrilled to announce the launch of the IOTA 2.0 public testnet. Builders and token holders, join us in exploring the, full, the future of full decentralization. Eh. Um... I don't own any IOTA, similar back to 2017. Whenever I, oh, I remember. Don't, don't, don't go shy away now. Yeah, people used to scream at me, and they told me that IOTA, uh, similar to uh, Scammy Solana, was the future, and that I was doing a disservice to my listeners by not promoting IOTA. And lo and behold, it's okay. So. It's one of those situations where I think it would simply, how do I say this? You know what? Go for it. You do what you need to do, IOTA. You launch your public test net. You launch IOTA 2.0 in 2027 when no one's still paying attention. A lot of coins are just back in the news because they're trying to let people know that they're in the news. I told you this would happen a couple of months ago. It happens every single bull run. You might have noticed and even realized that over the course of like an 11, 13, 15 month period, all the news was basically Bitcoin and there were like sprinkles of Ether and people go, TMI, why you know show more altcoin news is because altcoin news isn't usually a thing. Altcoin news only becomes a thing when the bull run is happening and altcoins are also pushing up in price. And a way for them to get more exposure is to basically announce that they're doing new things with their coins or their projects. But test nets, after not being in the news for three years, is crazy. Same exact thing with Cardano. You can't, I don't care what color your current test net is on, just launch the thing. It's, it's I mean, once and also lightly again, Ethereum's also in that same bucket because Ethereum has announced seven different upgrades and things that they wanted to do since the beginning of this year. So it's also like, aha. Uh -huh. Anywho, so let's see where this ends up going. There's no date as to when this is going to launch. There's no real uh, information as to what fully decentralized is going to mean. That's currently what Cardano is also announcing as well, that after seven years... They're trying to finally have their um, 
Cardano Constitution and make the network fully decentralized. I don't know why it took seven years when Bitcoin did it overnight, but that's, I guess, another conversation for a completely different time. So cool. IOTA's back in the news. Ethereum is back in the news. XRP is back in the news. We get some sprinkles of uh, light sprinkles of Shiba Inu and Dogecoin and Terra Luna Classic. We have not still, there's still no Algorand news. I've seen very few Polygon news. Tron is garbage, so there's no Tron news. What else is there? Hmm. It's like three. Oh, we've had some. Look at that. We, we, we've had some Litecoin news. I mean, we had some Monero, Dash, and Zcash news, but those were about like countries banning them and they being like delisted on crypto exchanges. What else is there? I'm thinking of like old popular coins. Huh. Oh, well. That's the IOTA 2.0 testnet news. Let's see if they can get to the main net before October 2025. I think that's going to do it for this video. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.